Oh, I'm so discouraged. I used to love this story so much, but now I don't know that I have the will to finish it anymore. Have you lost the passion to keep working on your story and don't know where to find it? Well, we've got good news for you. We've got three simple steps that can help you rekindle your passion for your project and give you the push that you need to finish the first draft of that baby. What's up guys? My name is Karina and I am a Christian young adult indie author and I'm on a mission to make the world a better place through storytelling and help writers like you do the same. So I wasn't completely sure what type of video I was going to do this week, but a couple of days ago I got a really amazing email from one of you all and I was really encouraged by it, it, it really made my day, but in that email there was a really really good question and that question was... Also, how do you find inspiration to push through a writing project until the end? So I, of course, responded to that email, I shared a few tips, and as I was responding to it, I realized that that is a really, really good question, and I thought that would actually make a really great video. So that's what I'm going to make my video about this week. It's going to be about how do you find the motivation to finish your writing project whenever you're stuck and you, you used to feel so passionate and so in love with this project, but you just need something else to keep you going till the end of this writing project. So I've got kind of three main tips that I'm going to share with you all today. So tip number one is remembering why you started writing this story in the first place. And I actually did a video on that quite a while ago of, you know, the whys of why you write a story and the why is of why I write stories, and I will include that up in the cards if I remember. But not just why you're writing it like, you know, I write it to have fun, like I write my stories to have fun, I write stories because I love to go on all these imaginary adventures, but also the why of what benefit are the readers going to get out of this? What message am I trying to communicate? And on the project that I'm actually preparing to do for Camp Manorimo in July, I realized that one of the pieces that was missing and why I didn't feel as passionate about the project anymore, even though I was still just in the outlining stage, which is always like, oh dear, I'm only in the outlining stage and I'm already losing my steam. Yikes. <laughs> I realized that in the process of trying to make this a really fun, adventurous story, I had lost sight of what message I was trying to communicate, and my character still had an arc. Now, fair enough, I was still struggling a lot with her arc, but I still was planning an arc, but that arc didn't really have any part of it that was applicable for us to take away today. It was an adventure story where the main character is probably not somebody that most of us are going to relate to as far as the situations that she goes through and things like that, at least I hope not. You know, some crazy adventures going on there, but I realized that that was part of what was missing was that there was no applicable takeaway from that character's arc that we could take to our everyday lives, that I could take to my everyday life, that you could take to your everyday life. There, that wasn't there. So as I worked on that and as I realized I could put in a, you know, biblical message in there and, and work that into her arc and, and, and put that piece in the puzzle, it started to fall together more. And it also helped me figure out where I was having a couple of plot holes that I needed to fix because the plot really seemed like it was dragging in a few places and some tweaking there. I still haven't gotten the whole thing outlined to where I'm happy with it. I'm still kind of working what characters need to be in the story and what characters don't need to be in the story, but that helped me get through that phase of being stuck, at least a big stepping stone in the right direction. So piece of advice number two is remember the parts of the story that you're most looking forward to writing. I get it. There are parts in a story no matter how much you do to make sure your middle is not saggy, no matter how much, you know, good pacing you have in a story, there are still parts that are boring to write. And they might not even be parts that are boring to read, they're just boring to write for whatever reason. So whenever you're stuck in those parts or when you're trying to get over a hump, just remember the parts that you are looking forward most to writing. Now, I don't have a recent example of this in my own writing as far as writing is concerned, but I am currently working on typing up a handwritten manuscript onto the computer. And this is actually the second time that I've had to do this. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before in my other videos, but it was one of the files that was lost whenever I damaged one of my thumb drives back in January. I don't know if you watched that vlog or not, but I have to retype it off the handwritten manuscript. And it is fairly long. I'm guessing it's going to be between 30 to 40,000 words. And that's a lot of typing. 
and it's pretty boring sometimes, especially because I'm having to do it again. And it wasn't quite done, but it was almost done uh, being typed whenever I watched the file. And so remembering the parts that I'm looking forward to reading again as I type it are helpful to getting me through and to remembering, yes, this is, this is a good story, this is going to be a, a good story, and we just need to keep going because, yes, this is really boring, but we just need to get to the other stuff. We need to get through this, get to the other stuff. So the third and the final pointer that I have for you is refer back to your outline. I know that not all of us are outline people, but I strongly recommend having some semblance of an outline when you're working just, even if it's five points, even if you just have kind of a gist of what happens in the first part of the story, the second part of the story, and the third part of the story. Just having something to refer back to when you're like, where is the story going again? What am I supposed to be writing next again? Having that can be so helpful and it has helped tremendously in me not getting stuck as often. I used to have many, many, many times where I would start a story and I would get, you know, a short ways into it, maybe just to the beginning of Act 2, maybe a little bit into Act 2, and I would get stuck just because I didn't know what to have happen next. I, I kind of knew the gist of the story, but I didn't know what to have happen next. And so that's where having an outline comes in handy. Not that an outline is going to save you in all the moments that you don't know what to have happen next, because I have had times where I do get stuck even with an outline, but that's where the other two points help come in handy where, you know, you look forward to other parts and you just you write something, you get through it, and you move on to something that's more exciting and will hold your attention better and you're more passionate and excited about. That's the word that I'm looking for. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you are the person who sent me that email and you are watching this, thank you so much for reaching out to me. It really made my day. And I am so glad to have all of you here with me on my writing journey. Make sure to like this video if you found it encouraging or inspiring or motivating. And be sure to subscribe down below if you're not already so that you can be a part of the Karina's Adventures community. I will see you guys in the next video. Get out there and write the story that God called you to write. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.